Andrew Shore on location at the 2010 meeting of the American Urological Association in San Francisco. There are more than 15,000 urologists here. One of the areas being discussed, as always, is urinary incontinence, particularly female urinary incontinence. And an expert in that field is from the University of Pennsylvania, and that's Assistant Professor Dr. Ariana Smith. We met with her just a few minutes ago. One of your areas of special interest you do a lot of work on is female incontinence. Where are we now with our understanding of it, and what's sort of the buzz here related to it? The AUA has recently come out with guidelines for the treatment of stress urinary incontinence in women, and those guidelines were revealed here at the 2010 AUA in San Francisco. And these guidelines really clarify for us the diagnostics and the treatment interventions for patients with this problem. All right, so that means a woman can go to a doctor and there's sort of a step-by-step -step approach that hopefully can get to relief for them. That's right, and we follow uh, these guidelines in practice and hope to come to some solutions for these patients. All right, that's stress incontinence. Now there's another kind of incontinence to urge incontinence. Where are we with that? Urge incontinence is the result of overactive bladder, and there's a lot of research being done, and there's a lot of treatments available for urge incontinence, and a lot of that work is being discussed here at the AUA. All right. So does someone have to suffer with either, either feeling like they have to go, the overactive bladder, or the leakage with the stress incontinence, uh, do they have to suffer, or do we have pretty good options now? We really do have some great options available to patients, and it's really important that they discuss with their physicians that they're having these problems and come in and be evaluated. And we can certainly start with a stepwise approach to the treatment for these problems. Okay, many people are embarrassed to come, or they're an older woman and they feel, oh, there's nothing you can do for me. We can do things for people of all ages. We certainly have patients who are very young in their 20s and 30s, as well as patients who are very old in their 90s and approaching 100. Even someone that old can... They certainly can be helped. So people are embarrassed though. So there are treatments. Let's go through the treatments for a little bit. Let's start with stress incontinence. What can you do here? I go around the booths at the convention and there are many different things that are out there. Yeah. Well, there are some conservative measures that don't involve surgical intervention, and those are usually tried first, things like behavioral changes and pe pelvic floor strengthening. When these things don't work or the patients aren't satisfied, we move on to surgical interventions. And here you are seeing a lot of devices or kits that the different manufacturers have uh, made for the treatment of stress incontinence, and they usually involve a small piece of mesh that's placed under the urethra. Um, we offer this surgery at University of Pennsylvania and many institutions do across the country. It tends to be very efficacious with success rates approaching 90%. And then there are things that can be injected in there. Right. I think they call them bulking agents. That's right. Bulking agent, agents can also be successful in a subset of patients, but they tend not to achieve this 80 or 90% success rate. So many patients don't choose that. Um, however, they are a good option for uh, different subsets of patients. How do you uh, go through this stepwise approach to know what you're dealing with and then have a discussion with the patient on what to do? Well, I start off by just having a discussion with the patient about their symptoms, what's bothering them most when they're experiencing the overactive bladder or the leakage. And then we move on and talk about um, the treatment options and, and what types of treatment they would be looking for. Some patients come in already knowing what they want and others really want to discuss with you what's out there and what's available. Dr. Smith, Carla from New York writes in, are there bladder function tests available to determine the severity of urinary incontinence? The answer is yes, Carla. There are bladder tests available. They're called urodynamics. And what urodynamics does is it helps reproduce the symptoms that you experience at home so that the physician can visualize exactly what's going on in the bladder and measure pressures and uh, other things that are important in determining what to do for your incontinence. Alice from Miami writes in, are women more susceptible to urinary incontinence because they have reproductive organs, men don't? Well, Alice, that's a very interesting question. Certainly, the process of pregnancy, labor, and delivery can impact the woman's pelvic floor, and men don't go through this process. And the impact on the pelvic floor certainly can make you more susceptible to stress-related urinary incontinence. 
That being said, in older age, men and women equally experience overactive bladder, which can lead to urge-related urinary incontinence. Dr. Smith's advice is there is no reason for anyone to suffer with urinary incontinence. Seek consultation with a doctor who's willing to work with you to solve the problem. In San Francisco, I'm Andrew Shore.